Kayla, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to easily and accurately adjust your Dynacraft mountain bike. Having a properly adjusted bicycle can make all the difference between a pleasant ride and one that's uncomfortable or frustrating. That's why I'm here to help you to correctly fit and adjust your bike to keep you feeling great as you pedal. I'll be walking you through the steps one by one. When fitting your bike to yourself, there are four areas that affect how comfortable your ride will be. The frame size, the saddle, including saddle height, angle, and backward-forward placement, the handlebar, including height and bar angle, and the controls, including brake and shift levers. The only thing you can't adjust out of these four is your frame size, so it is important to choose the proper bicycle for your body measurements. The way to check if the frame fits you is to understand standover height, which isn't as complicated as it sounds. It's all about how much room there is between you and the bike when you're standing over it. On DynacraftBike.com, we list the standover height for each of our bikes so that you can make sure to buy the bike that fits you. To figure out which standover height is right for you, you need to first measure your inseam. Be sure to keep your shoes on and measure all the way down to the ground, like this. Next, compare this measurement with the standover height of the bike. Your inseam should be one to three inches higher than the bicycle's standover height. That way, when standing over the bike, you should have one to three inches of space between you and the top tube of the frame. If you have less than one inch, the bike is too big and it could be uncomfortable or even dangerous to get off. With more than three inches of space, the bike is too small and may not be able to be adjusted to your body, which could also make your ride uncomfortable or even unsafe. On some ladies' frames, however, the top tube of the bike slopes like this, so you may have more than three inches of room, which is fine. Now that we know that your bike is the right size, it's time to move on to the adjustments. We realize that you may not have a bicycle stand or trainer at home, so have a friend hold the handlebar and front wheel firmly, like this, to keep the bike steady and upright while you make your adjustments. You will need a few different tools depending on your particular bike. An adjustable wrench and a set of metric Allen wrenches will most likely be required. A level and a plumb bob with a string will also come in handy to adjust everything properly. The first thing we want to do is to adjust the saddle to the correct height. To get a general idea of where it should be, stand next to the bike. The saddle should be right around hip level. Then sit on the bike and place the pedal in the lowest or six o'clock position like this. With the pedal in this position, put your heel on it, keeping your foot parallel to the ground. Your leg should be straight with no bend in it at all. This way, when your foot is in the normal pedaling position, your knee will be slightly bent. If your leg is not straight when your heel is on the pedal, or if your heel doesn't reach the pedal, you should move the saddle up or down. To do this, dismount the bike, open the quick release lever here, and adjust the saddle. Remember to take note of the minimum insertion mark when adjusting the saddle up or down. This mark should always remain covered by the frame. The saddle should also be in line with the frame of the bicycle. After tightening the lever back up, check the saddle height one last time. Make sure that it's tight and does not rotate in the seat tube. Now let's adjust the angle of the saddle. This is where a level can come in handy. In general, most people want the saddle to be level with the ground, like this. If you're experiencing numbness or pressure from the saddle, you can tilt the front up or down. To tilt the saddle, loosen the nut under the saddle here. Be careful not to loosen it too much or remove it. After it's been loosened, you will be able to tilt the saddle up or down to find the right position for you. Once you have it where you like it, just tighten the nut back up. The forward and backward position of the saddle involves a little more thought. Hop back on the bike and put the pedal into the three o'clock position like this. Use a straight edge or a plumb bob, or even just by looking carefully, check to see that the front of your knee is exactly above the middle of the pedal like this. I'm using a plumb bob, which is the most accurate way to tell, but just get it as close as you can. If the front of your knee isn't above the middle of the pedal, then you need to move the saddle back or forth to line it up. Loosen the same nut that we just talked about, being careful again not to loosen it all the way or remove it. Move the saddle back or forth until it's in the right position, then tighten it back up. 
Check to make sure it's still level and lined up with the frame one last time and make any more adjustments that are needed. After you're finished, double check that the seat bolts are fully tightened. The saddle shouldn't tilt up or down or move side to side. With the saddle height, tilt, and forward backward adjustment all set, we can move on to the handlebar. The two things we can adjust on most handlebars are the height and angle. Please note that some Dynacraft bikes use a threadless system, and if your bike has this type of setup, then you are only able to adjust the angle of your handlebars and not the height without taking it into a bike shop. To adjust the height of the handlebar, loosen the bolt on the stem here. Some bikes require an Allen wrench for this bolt, while some can be loosened with an adjustable wrench. Once the bolt is loosened, raise or lower the stem until you find a comfortable position. This is really a matter of preference, as some riders prefer a more upright position for comfort, while others like to be more aerodynamic for performance. Keep in mind that just like the seat post, the minimum insertion mark on this stem has to remain hidden. Once you have the handlebar at a comfortable height, tighten the stem bolt back up, keeping the stem in a straight line with the front wheel. Check to make sure the stem is secure by holding the front wheel between your legs and trying to move the handlebar back and forth like this. It should not move. Adjusting the angle of the handlebar is next. This is done by loosening the bolt or bolts on the front of the stem here. There could be one, two, or even four bolts depending on your bike. The key is to not loosen them very much, just until the handlebar can move. Once the handlebar is loose, rotate the bar back and forth until it feels comfortable. Don't worry about the angle of the controls right now. We'll adjust those next. In the ideal position, your arms should have a slight bend in them like this to help absorb some of the bumps. It is best to avoid having your arms locked completely straight as this can be uncomfortable and make for a rough ride. Once you have the handlebar where you want it, re-tighten the bolt or bolts on the stem. If your bike has more than one bolt, it is important to tighten them evenly, a little at a time. For four bolt stems, be sure to tighten them in a cross pattern. Make sure everything is snug and the handlebar can't be rotated within the clamp. Now that the handlebar is set, it's time to make sure the controls are at a comfortable angle. Ideally, the tops of your hands will be in a straight line with your arms, like this. You want to avoid having your wrists at an extreme angle, one way or the other. To adjust your brake levers, loosen the bolt here. Only loosen it enough for the lever to move, being careful not to remove the bolt. Once you can move the lever, adjust it to the angle that best suits you. Then just tighten it back up so it stays put on the handlebar. Repeat this step for the other side. Riders with smaller hands can adjust the reach of the brake lever by turning this screw in. The shifters can be adjusted in the same way, by loosening the small bolt here and adjusting the angle. Once you have everything adjusted to a comfortable position, double check it's all secure by trying to move the brake levers and shifters like this. They shouldn't budge at all. Before riding, it is a good idea to go over all the nuts or bolts that we've used for adjustments, as well as the ones we didn't touch. Everything should be nice and snug, but be careful not to over tighten. Also, take the time to make sure your tires are pumped up to the recommended pressure, which is a number you'll find on the side of your tire, followed by PSI. Now that we're sure your frame is the right size, the saddle and handlebar have been adjusted, and the controls are set at the right angles, it's time to go for a spin. Always remember to wear a helmet. Don't forget, having the right bike and making sure it's adjusted correctly will keep your ride as fun and safe as possible. Enjoy! Yeah.